Jackson, it's the news pretty much every Salford fan's been waiting for. You signed a deal. Yeah, so um, after a couple of weeks of discussing what I was going to do next, I obviously come to the decision that I wanted to stay at Salford. Um, in the end, it was a pretty easy decision, to be honest. When I laid in bed at night, I, I weighed up my options and I really couldn't see myself playing for anyone else at this stage over here. Um, the amount of support the club gave me through a tough time in my life, um, and then obviously the, the love that I've got off the fans and then the respect I've got off the playing group is something that if I walked away from, I don't know if I'll, I would have been happy with that. Um, you know, everyone talks about, oh, you got to play for trophies, you got to play for this, and for me, I've got a why not attitude, and um, nothing's ever guaranteed in rugby league, so if I went to a Wigan or went to a different club, you're not guaranteed to do anything. And um, I've built the base here of um, a hard-working sort of player, and as I said, I've got the fans that support me, I've got the club that supports me, and, um, you know, I support the playing group, so... Um, yeah, I'm happy with it and um, hopefully we have a good year next year. Tell us a bit about that, that kind of last night after the Toulouse game when you went over to the stadium. By the time you came away from that, you looked quite emotional when you came back. It was like it was something you remember, really. It's something that um, coming over here, I, I wanted to I wanted to win every game. Um, for, not personally as a team and obviously we fell two games short of that. Um, uh, the reason I was emotional was because it, I felt like I'd achieved something. Um, not a lot of people really care about bottom eights or whatever, but for me it was a massive, massive achievement to, to set out to accomplish, to keep this club in Super League and to, to play a big part, and that was something that I'm very proud of and, and something that I'll, I'll never forget. Um, the reception at the end, getting chaired, and then everyone singing the song was just... It's hard to put into words something like that. You sort of um, grow up dreaming of being put in situations like that, either winning the grand final or things like that, but to see how much it meant to the public and and the people that turn up for Salford that we got to stay in Super League is something that um, you look back on, look, I've got photos that um, were taken that I still swipe through now and just get quite chuffed at it. And the video that Super League posted, it's pretty cool. It's something that you'll be able to look back on when you're done and just go, wow, like I was a part of something special like that. So as I said, it's something that would have been very tough to walk away from and something that wouldn't have felt as real if I walked away from it. And you've always, you've made, since you arrived, you've made no bones. You, you know about English Rugby League, you know about the Super League, you watch it. Competition's changing next year, one up, one down. It's going to be a different kind of competition with different pressures next year. What are you hoping to achieve, not just for yourself, but with the club? Yeah, obviously just making the top eight and then um, obviously chasing the semi-final spot. And A lot of people laugh and go, yeah, good luck, but that's what you play the game for. And as I said, you've got no guarantees whatever club you're at. Um, other clubs have more money, other clubs have better facilities, so what? It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you go out there and play 80 minutes and the better team wins. And if we can better be the better team more times than not next year and give ourselves a chance to make the eight and, and have a good year, that, that'll be a success. And then, you know, the club's still got a little bit of room to, to work with to sign a few more players yet. And I, I know they're working hard to get a few people over the line. So um, the good news will hopefully keep coming for the club and then um, have a little break, come back into pre-season, rip in and hopefully have a successful year. So you're heading back to Australia on Wednesday. Yep. Um, what are your plans for pre-season before you come back? Yeah. yeah, so go home, um, enjoy the sun while it lasts over there and then obviously come back here and I'll be bucketing down, freezing, snowing. And, uh, I still haven't quite got my head around that yet. You will. Uh, <laughs> I might have to start Googling photos and videos of what it's going to be Don't like. Be because, um, yeah, you know, I'm just excited. Like It's just exciting to know that you've got your future sorted for at least another year now and you know where you're going to be. It um, feels like home here. You know, I'm very close with the staff and the players and... Um, it should be fun pre-season, you know, it's always a good time of the year because everyone's got a chance at pre-season to do something special um, for, the, for that year. So uh, if we have a solid pre-season, get some more players on board, uh, the players that were here last year improve again, uh, who knows, it's just a really exciting time for the club and hopefully this news lifts a few people's day and um, we get some more people to um, buy some tickets for next year. And Jackson Hastings in a happier place now than he was a few months back. Yeah, it wouldn't have been too hard. Um, it's everything, I, it's more than I expected, sorry. Um, it's been a dream. Just being recep uh, the reception that I've been given is it, just something that I'll never forget. And um, as I said, we'll try and get a few more bums on seats next year. But if we get the same amount, they make as much noise as anyone. So I'm just um, proud to be a sofa player for 2019, and hopefully we do something good.